Hello, everyone, and inside today's episode of Locked On Canadians, the Habs played a very exciting game on in St. Louis on Saturday night. We're going to have all the recap and details from that, and then it is Monday. That means it's time for our three up and three down list for who is on the rise and who is on the way down around the Montreal Canadiens organization and hockey as a whole, all inside today's show. Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 716 of Locked On Canadians. And that is very fitting because I do live in the fine city of Buffalo, New York, where the Packers and Bills are set to square off and make me miserable in short time when we are recording this. I am one of your hosts. I am Scott Matla. And as always, thank you for making us your first listen of the day, wherever you are listening to this podcast or if you are watching our beautiful faces. And I say beautiful because we are. We are beautiful, beautiful people inside and out, despite what you might say on Twitter. Thank you. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell so you get notified anytime we post a new video. And I have now talked long enough without introducing my fantastic co-host, the active stick, Laura Saba. And Laura, this is not Locked On Tired podcast host today. How are we doing going into Monday and a new week? I have to say I'm feeling a lot better uh, than I was in the last couple of weeks. And um, I'm just going to quickly... Explain what's going on in my life right now because somebody complained about it in the comments one too many times. My life is busy. I've been tired and I would like to thank all of our listeners for bearing with me. Like I know that my personality hasn't really been very upbeat on the show and I know Scott has had to carry a lot of it. So also apologize to apologies to Scott. But um, I do have one thing to say and I want you to listen carefully. Bring it in here. If you have a problem with me, unsubscribe from this podcast because I'm not going anywhere and I'm not changing my personality. I'm not changing any, any aspect of the way that I am, what I think or who I am, because somebody keeps complaining in the comments about me, just unsubscribe. And the more you complain, the longer I'm going to re up with locked on, the more years I'll be here, even after Scott has moved on and the more I will talk. So if you have a problem with me, take it elsewhere. I don't care. Scott doesn't care. None of our listeners care. If you're listening to this podcast, it's because you want to hear us what we have to say about the Habs. But also part of it is when we ask each other how we're doing, like that's not rambling. That's not talking. That is literally banter. Everybody does it for whatever reason. You only have a problem with me doing it. So again, if you have any kind of problem with me, go away, go away. We don't need your hit. We don't need it because I'm not going anywhere and I'm not changing. I was going to say, if you have a problem with Laura, you have a problem with both of us. And I, we are always open to critique. And if we miss some information here and there, we are open to fair criticisms or suggestions. If you're going to be a jerk, no one has time for that. There's enough of that crap in the world already. We're here to have a good time. We're here to talk hockey with fans, with other people and everything I like to bring you the best show five days a week. If you have a problem with my co-host, you have a problem with myself and you don't want a problem with myself. I have a lot of caffeine and a lot of free time on my hands. I will give you whatever you possibly could be looking for out of this, and you're not going to want that. But we're going to let that slide away. You want to know why? Because the Montreal Canadiens played one hell of an entertaining game on Saturday night against the St. Louis Blues. Didn't start great. They looked sluggish. It was one of their worst first periods they've played this season so far. They went down 3-1, to one, and it looked like, ah, well, What are you going to do? St. Louis is kind of a heavy team. They're a veteran team. They know what they're doing. And then the Habs just went, you know what we should do? We (laughs) should score five straight goals, including two on the power play, including one with Uri Slavkovsky on the power play, and then cap it off with a hat trick by Christian Dvorak to come out with a 7-4 to win. It was It was fun. The game started with the energy of a funeral and ended with like a bunch of kids hopped up on Mountain Dew and Pixie Sticks. And that (laughs) is what I am all about with this team here. Cole Caulfield, still amazing. Nick Suzuki, still amazing. And and I want to bring everyone in here. I want to bring everyone in real, real close here. And I want you to listen to me. Cole Caulfield is second in the NHL in goals scored behind just Connor McDavid. There is an actual chance that right now, 
Things will change as we go on here. Cole Caulfield right now is in the Rocket Richard race. I cannot remember the last time the Montreal Canadiens had someone in the Rocket Richard race. I am very excited to see what is coming with this team here. It wasn't the prettiest game, but damn if it wasn't fun. We must live, slap, and love as much as we can because this team, <laughs> even when they lose, are so damn entertaining. But they won, which is even better. So we'll worry about Connor Bedard later. I want to shout out this podcast that I just started listening to called Sports Unite Podcast. And I was listening to the, um, the preview, the season preview episode that they were doing. They talked about how in five years from now, Caden Gooley is going to be a perennial Norris contender. And our friend Jason Paul on Twitter was talking about how, you know, opposing teams are now game planning for Caden Gooley, which is a lot earlier than we expected. I mean, we all know he was knew he was going to be good. We all knew he had like some of the most promise we've seen a defensive prospect in a while. Uh, and, you know, he's really done everything that he possibly could to to keep himself in that conversation of improvements, even the mistakes that he, he's making. They're far fewer and they're far less frequent than I expected, especially given the minutes that he's playing at the NHL level. So I want to talk a little bit because we're talking about, you know, that the Habs uh, are, are, are not tanking or, or they're not sucking like we thought. It's a fun season. You know, things could go off the rails. It's kind of reminding me of how excited Detroit fans were last year because they had some of their younger players really shine, um, really kind of come out and sort of show themselves and show that there's a future in that in that city. And I think that's what the young players in Montreal are doing, like our friend Jared Book. Um, he pointed it out. He's like, it's not, you know, I'm not worried about the draft pick because of how the Habs are winning games. It's the young players that are really stepping it up, that are really growing in throughout these, you know, these first, I, I guess we're now we're at the first almost month of the NHL. So you know, the fact that they're improving in the area that they're supposed to be improving, it makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot palatable to say, well, maybe they're not going to get Bedard, you know, but a top seven, top eight finish, you're still going to get a really good player. And the fact that you're getting the most out of these young guys so early on is just, it's so, so gratifying. It, it shows so much promise. There's going to be bumps in the road. This team's not going to make the playoffs. It's fine. Because they're putting together performances like this where they're not giving up at the sign at the first sign of adversity. So, you know, I, I, I shouted out Caden Gooley, but I also want to talk, obviously, about Cole Caulfield, about Nick Suzuki. Um, I think for me, one of the things that I'm seeing, what, what I really like is that they are all working on the things that they need to work on. You're seeing them improve game to game. Like Martin St. Louis is identifying the things that they need to do. And he's also identifying in himself, right? Like there's been a lot of talk about the power play of late. He's also identifying in himself things that he needs to change, which, you know, for us, maybe we were like, it, please change it. It took too long for us. But I just love the way that they're approaching the growth of these young players. And I can't say enough about it. And this isn't just one game, right? Like we're talking about the games they lost too. So not to bleed into our three up and three down. I really just feel like the St. Louis game had many elements that show the promise of the future of this young team. And I, I do want to take part of our Monday uh, episode, the one we're recording on Monday night and we we're going to talk a little bit about that, like how this is right now the best case scenario for the Canadians. And we will get into that. But like Laura said, and like I said, off the top of the show, this is the episode that is going out on Monday morning. And that means it is time for three up and three down where we rank who is on the way up and who is on the way down, starting with our three down players. And that's all coming up in our next segment. But first, you know, and you know it very well, this show is brought to you by a bet online we can get all the latest odds, news, and scores all in one place. The NFL season is in full swing. The NCAA football season is in full swing. NBA basketball has just started, and that means NCAA basketball is right around the corner. They have everything you are looking for, so latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, in-depth analysis, all in one place. And they have everything you need in terms of live betting for up-to-the-minute scores for everything. You can also bet on things like golf, MMA, boxing. Bet online has you covered. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more. And remember, bet online, it's where the game starts. We are back. We are locked on Canadians. And when you're done checking us out, please check out Game to Game. Uh, you can find that wherever you get your daily podcasts or on YouTube as well. You'll have all your NHL stuff all on the Locked On NHL channel. So thank you, uh, not only for subscribing to us, but also checking them out when you were done listening here. And the, the wildest part about this season is the Canadians have been better than we've expected. 
And there have been some players that have been notable, noticeably, you know, down players or had issues. We've talked about David Savard maybe being miscast a little bit. We've talked about Mike Hoffman struggling to be that guy. And like, I'm looking at the team this week and I haven't really found much that I'm going, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, that's, that's a problem. Last year we had no, we had no, nothing but abundances of players who were not pulling their weight here. And the easy thing is to go, ah, it's Jonathan drew in. Ah, it's Mike Hoffman this week. I, I really do think that we don't have a lot of down things this week. And the biggest thing is the Habs odds for Connor Bedard are the only thing that have gone down this week. And that's okay because Leo Carlson and Adam Fantilli and Delavore Dvorsky are players who are out there in that top 10. It's a, it's a pretty good spot to be in. I, I see more and more people getting on board with the, you know, not tanking thing and K we love you. They're going to lose games. Don't worry about it. I promise you they're going to lose games and stay in that lottery spot here because they're getting pretty unsustainable goaltending across the board. But Laura, out of the games we've watched this week, is there really anyone that stood out as like actually really not pulling their weight or like actually being well worthy of the down list this week? I don't think so. And I know it's it's tempting to default to Mike Hoffman. And, and it's true, it is. Or Jonathan Drouin. It's tempting to do that. I think one thing that I want to go back on with in terms of the lottery odds and the lottery spot is that you have to remember that there's teams that are expected to be good that have been struggling out of the gate, uh, both in the division as well as in the conference. You know, people are like, what, what are the Rangers doing? You know, or, or the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, not to be gratuitous about it, there are teams that are expected to be good that are struggling. Um, and, the, you know, the Habs position in the standings and all of that is, it, again, it's very early on. We're not even at U.S. Thanksgiving, which is usually the benchmark for who's going to make it and who's not. So I wouldn't worry too much about the position because I do think that they still need to get a top 10 pick and preferably top five if they can. But this team's not going to tank. And I think that that's that's why we're having trouble identifying somebody who's been bad. You know, you've got players who haven't really been spectacular, but then you've got so many people that are either playing ahead of their development or playing above their own ability right now. We're talking about the goaltending. We're talking about everybody. Right. And so you can't really complain too much. So sometimes I feel like we need to go out of the NHL level to kind of find the downs and sometimes the ups too. And that's the thing is this week is my, my one major down. And it's not even that because I'm not a prospect expert. I just play one on this podcast. Uh, we oh, talk about, oh, you know, oh. locked on yes. NHL pro- podcast, uh, locked on NHL prospects is launching today. So when you are done listening to us, check out locked on NHL prospects with our friend, Hattie Kalakesh. Uh, and we will have Hattie on to talk about have specific prospects, but also all prospects. Hattie's going to be covering them. Yes. Sorry. And that actually helps because I do have a question to ask him about, you know, I'm looking at Tyce Milanic, who transferred to the University of Wisconsin, wanted to have a bigger role than he was getting at Quinnipiac. And through the season, I haven't seen his name on the score sheet as much as I would like. Yeah, Wisconsin is in a much tougher conference with harder teams to play against. But someone who is now a junior in college should be producing at a higher clip than what he has been at right now. And I have my concerns. He wasn't he wasn't an elite tier prospect. We're not talking like Caulfield when he was in college or Slavkovsky if he were back in Europe right now, but he is a very talented player with the skills we had. Uh, we were on a show with Locked on Flyers with um, uh, Russ and Rachel, and we talked about Ty Smolanik a little bit here. And I got the semblance of what his game was, and I haven't seen him on the score sheet the way I want. And I'm hoping that that continues to, you know, Change One, they already got the unprotected first-round pick, which makes the Ben Sherratt trade a huge win for Kent Hughes. I'm hoping they can turn Tyce Milanic into an NHL-caliber player and further increase that. And outside of that, my only other real down is the consistency with the Laval Rocket continues to be just a complete and utter whatever. They won 8-1 on Friday night, blew the Amherst out of the water, lost 5-1 on Saturday. The consistency from game to game is a little bit of a struggle, and I'm not sure if it's just guys not meshing or they were expecting other pieces here or what, but uh, Nicholas Baudin should be joining the lineup in uh, short enough order for the Canadians soon. I, I'm finding it hard to complain when the Canadians are already playing above my expectations, which is great. And they're playing well, even when they lose. 
it's a pretty sweet spot to be in when you came into the season with absolutely no expectations for anything. Playing well and then losing is not so bad because then we get the exciting games and we also get the higher draft pick. Although against Ottawa and Toronto, they must win. Like that's that's not negotiable. Uh, also with Laval, I think they'll work it out. I, I, I feel like it's going to be a bumpy first month or so. You know, we're already well into the first month. We're getting close into the second month. I think they'll work it out. I think that there's, again, like there were so many changes in the offseason, so many people that left, so many people that maybe they expected to have from the NHL team that stayed on the NHL level. So, you know, I think they'll work it out. I have faith that they'll still be one of the better teams in the AHL this year, and I have faith that their games will be fun to go to. And the thing is, now we get to do the fun part of the show. Now we're going to turn things over. We're going to take a look at... We got to keep it to three people on the up list and we're going to do our best, but there were an, a lot of positives around the Montreal Canadiens organization this week, outside the NHL, inside the NHL and elsewhere. We're going to dive into all of that coming up next. All right, we are back. It is our final segment on this Monday show. It is Locked on Canadians. This is the three up, three down, and this is the up segment because we like to end this show on a positive note and Laura, there's going to be no shock what I think our first overall, top overall up is going to be on this list. It's Cole Caulfield. How could how could it absolutely not be at this point? Seven NHL, seven goals this year, second in the NHL, and just an absolute nuisance every part of the ice that he's on. His maturation under Martin St. Louis is absolutely unrivaled at this point. I just keep going back and it's it's partly because our, our very unhinged friends at Habs on Reddit brought it back up <laughs> um, the um, the video of the of the Flyers fans as uh, as as Cole Caulfield was not drafted by their team and it makes me feel so bad but it's so delicious that like the Habs have him like that that's how good he was is that even Flyers fans that hate everything wanted Cole Caulfield so I think one thing that I love about him is that he even though he knows he's kind of the favorite let's be honest he's he's martin st louis favorite he does get a little bit of special attention there's a little bit more spotlight in him he is expected to be one of the stars like he still enjoys every moment of hockey he still plays every moment of hockey as if it's going to be his last and i love that like he he's so good and he i feel like even though he knows how good he is he's still trying to take it to another level every single time and I love that. I think he's trying, he's always like, you look at him and he's trying to create more space or approach things a different way or outsmart a defender in a different way, uh, connect with a player, with, with, a, with a teammate in a different way, particularly Nick Suzuki, obviously. Um, it's just, you see him try to take his own game to other levels in every single game that he plays. And I just love that. I think, you know, it's one thing to be young, to have the spotlight on you, to know that you're good and you have superstar potential. It's a whole other thing to actually embody that and play like that and, and, and keep working. Like he doesn't stop working, even though he could, he could coast. He makes it look easy, right? He doesn't do that. And I love that about him. Like he's never, he's never done learning. He's never done trying. He's never done getting better. I absolutely love that. I do also want to shout out because I feel like this is going to be an honorable mention and sorry for spoiling if it's not. Lane Hudson. Speaking of short kings. Well, there goes my third. Da- I, I guess we're going to jump into Lane Hudson uh, in a second. <laughs> sorry, I, did wa- sorry. I, I did want to say one thing about Cole Caulfield. Uh, watching the start of the Blues game, I, we we're in the eyes on the prize slack and we're talking about how, you know, the game's going. It's not going great, but Caulfield is getting opportunities. He's getting good chances on plays that are broken. Sooner or later, he's going to get a play that isn't broken and the puck's going in the net. And then he did it twice because he's very good at what he does. And that pass from Nick Suzuki to him on that second goal was mm, chef's kiss. Beautiful as Nick, as uh, Cole Caulfield called it, spooky. Why spooky? I don't know. Um, kid full of candy and everything else. Don't know. I'm just going to go with I just repeating what he said. But Lane Hudson was one of my other ups this week. He forced overtime on Saturday night. And then he won it in overtime. Watching him play with the puck on his stick, he's deceptive. He opens up shooting lanes. He opens up passing lanes. He can skate. His edge works so good. Uh, I think it was Andrew Berkshire said it that, you know, he's still a couple of years away, but he's the kind of dynamic player that Canadians need on their power play. 
Yeah, Jeff Petrie was very good at what he did. And yes, Mike Matheson will probably be a really good compliment there. They've been missing a dynamic puck moving defenseman on the power play, basically since PK Subban left. Shea Weber was not a puck mover. Puck, Shea Weber was a puck shooter, very hard shooter at that. Lane Hudson potentially being that guy to fill that void is something I'm really excited to see. There's a long season and a long career still ahead of him still, but he's been so good. Short King season is in full swing for the Montreal Canadiens. And uh, God, it's not hard to be excited about what he does, what Lane Hudson does. And, you know, as much as I've been down on other prospects for slow starts in the NCAA, Lane Hudson's just been the complete opposite of that at this point. I, I absolutely agree with you. And, and you know how positive I am on him. And it's just, he seems to kind of not go under the radar, but he does it in a surprising way. If that makes sense. Like he, he's, he's outsmarting the opponents is the best way that I can put it. And obviously he's still in the NCAA, right? Like this is his first season there and everything. And we talked a lot about how he's got like his upside is really high, but you have to expect, you have to realize how raw he is really. Uh, and just the fact that he's been able to do all of these things. And, and this isn't the first time he's had one of those multiple goal, multiple point games. So I just, I think that the future is looking very bright. And if he does develop into, if he does develop into an NHLer, like you're going to be sitting pretty in like three years time. Uh, and to wrap up the three up three down, I do have to give an honorable mention, uh, Christian Dvorak's hat trick, uh, where he looked less than thrilled about the entire thing, the entire time, that which was apparently, so good. Is, apparently it's just his brand coyotes fans. Like he's never smiled like once in his entire life, <laughs> man scored two goals in under a minute and then got a hat trick goal to seal the game and looked quite frankly, just kind of pissed off about it, which, okay. <laughs> If that's what you so want to do, though. I guess. I thought he was doing it on purpose. It was so funny. Apparently, that's just how he is. He's just grumpy looking all the time, which, okay, fine. You know, I'm not going to fault you for it. Uh, I did want to mention him in there because I thought he's had an underrated start of the season. Points or not, I think Christian Dvorak's been playing well enough. Uh, and I want to give a big shout out to the Canadians goalies. Samuel Montembeau and Jake Allen were immense this week. Samuel Montembeau with a 43 save performance against the Buffalo Sabres. And Jake Allen was under siege against the Blues. Yeah, four goals against, but he played extremely well and continues to play extremely well this season. Uh, in terms of the expect goal saved above expected, it's Allen and Montembeau have been keeping Canadian teams in game this season. And you know what? For the price you're paying for both of them, you can understand why Montembeau got a two-year extension, why Allen got a contract extension, they fit what this team needs right now. And they're no longer wilting when things go badly for them. And the balance seems to be working out. Everything that is going right for the Canadians right now starts in net where they are not worrying about pucks going in, you know, on bad shots. They'll happen. It will happen. But Allen and Montembeau have been so good in this past week. They were extremely good again. Uh, the Canadians winning does kind of hinge a little on them performing up to their standard. I don't think they're both going to be, you know, 925, 930 goalies, but they don't have to be for what the Canadians need this season. But it's really nice to kind of get that to balance out a little bit where every shot went in versus, hey, we got some saves here and there now. It feels like kind of like a karmic balance for last year. Yeah, 100%. I, I think this is also one of those things where like they're both kind of placeholders right until the Canadians figure out what they're doing in goal in the next, in the, in the next few years. I think that as placeholders, they're playing way above that stature. And I can't, you know, we, we've talked about this on the podcast before we like them as people, we want to see them succeed. And this just makes me happy to be honest. Cause like, you know, they're going to move on to other teams at some point. So I do hope that when they do, they they land in places that do deserve them and appreciate them and that they're able to have success on those other teams. And, and that's, I think, the best part is, you know, the Habs are probably a little unsustainable right now, but you know what? Let's have fun with that because last year they were somehow unsustainably yet sustainably bad where everything that could go wrong did go wrong for the Montreal Canadiens. And this year it's kind of balancing out. Uh, when you are listening to this, the next game is Tuesday night. They'll be in Minnesota to play the Wild. 
Uh, if you were listening to other podcasts uh, on Monday night before I record our show with Laura, I will be on the Hockey Wilderness podcast to talk Habs with my other SB Nation comrades and in, in arms there. So we'll have a little bit of that. And then Laura and I will bring everything we need to you, previewing the game, talking a little bit about tanking, rebuilding, and why the Habs are in a good space and all that. That'll all be coming up. So make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. Follow Laura at The Active Stick. You can follow myself at Scott Matlow. When you're done, please check out Lockdown Sports today. A lot like game to game. Wherever you get your podcasts on YouTube, they have it there for you. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. And we will see you all next time.